there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I'm your host for today's episode, Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. Today is a very special episode because we are introducing a new co-host to the show. I would love to introduce you guys to Nikki Ivey. Nikki, how are you doing today? I am well today. I'm, I'm super excited. Awesome. So as you guys know, we've been introducing a lot of new co-hosts from outside of the Sweetfish team that are doing specific category-based topics. Uh, You see different series with hashtag. Uh, Nikki is actually part of the Sweetfish team and is joining on as a fellow co-host on the team. And she is also on the partnerships team here at Sweetfish. So Nikki, I would love for you to share with folks a little bit about your background. You've got some journalism, some broadcast in there. So excited to be hosting a podcast. Uh, I'll let you tell it. Tell us a little bit about why you're excited and what you're going to be doing and what listeners can expect. I'll tell you all of those things. Um, Well, I'm excited because this opportunity is like a unicorn opportunity because of the different parts of my background and experience that it sort of marries together. So my education is in journalism and broadcasting, but most of my experience has been uh, in B2B sales. And so, you know, I understand having been a journalism major, right? How sales essentially, right, is is telling a good story a lot of the time. But there, there was still this element of it that you can't exactly do on the cold call, right? So having the opportunity to do that you know, and be paid for it or, and, and get to hear people's stories and pick brains of who's doing cool stuff in the space was, you know, those are a couple of reasons why I was super excited. Uh, and so far so good. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. I, I've heard some of the interviews you've already recorded. I know no one's heard them yet, but I think first one's probably coming up here in just a few days. Nikki is going to put me to shame as a host <laughs> here on the feed. So you'll hear you know, episodes from me still, episodes from Nikki, but you guys will probably love Nikki that much more. So wanted to take a second, introduce this new voice, uh, Nikki Ivey here on the Sweetfish team. She's going to be uh, hosting a lot of interviews here in your feed. And part of the story here is, as we mentioned, Nikki just joined the Sweetfish team. So we wanted to make this episode uh, valuable for you guys, the listeners, in not just introducing you to Nikki, which I think is, is valuable because she's going to be doing great as a host, but she just got done with a job search. As we mentioned, she just joined the Sweetfish team. So what we want to share with you guys today is Nikki's four easy ways to stand out in a job search. Not much is easy about a job search. So let's touch on some easy, some practical things that people can do. And we'll be talking through those here for the rest of the episode. So Nikki, I would love for you to share with listeners this first one, all about building and maintaining relationships with your past colleagues. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's it's something that I think when folks give advice on impressions, right? A lot of the conversation is around first impressions. And, and certainly in a job search, that's something that people focus on, right? It's how do I, you know, engage these people and, and win them for this so that they remember me uh, and, or hire me. Or even on, you know, in interactions on, on sales calls, you think of, you know, making the first impression to engage folks. But what worked for me was, you know, during some of these times when I was leaving an organization, it was as it tends to be. It was painful at times. 
it was really difficult at times, but I was really mindful of, you know, the sort of taste I left in people's mouths when I was leaving. One example, I, I worked uh, for a longtime mentor of mine, Scott Lee, at, at Qualia, and it, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out for me. But I had, there's a period of time when I knew, okay, I'm going to be exiting this organization. A bunch of us knew, right? And we had a choice. We could, you know, show up and sort of phone it in until our time ran out, you know, be on our phones, YouTubing and, you know, collecting a check while we, you know, search for other jobs on the internet. Or I, I decided I could, you know, give every ounce of effort that I had that I could muster and demonstrate how much I still really believed in what they're doing there, right? And how much I still really cared about that team and that opportunity. And that, you know, ended up coming back around. And I guess I'll get to that here in a minute. But that's really what I mean is, is just paying attention to not only how you enter an organization, but doing your best to leave it better than, than when you came, uh, whether that means the relationships you build and keep with leadership or uh, the relationships that you build and keep with your, your teammates. Yeah, absolutely. I think that story is a testimony to your integrity, which I know was was not the point there, but just highlighting you guys, Nikki is is really good people. And that's why we're excited to have her <laughs> on the team. But you make a really good point there is not just focusing on the first impression. Everybody can can do that first impression thing, but it takes it takes integrity. It takes, you know, a commitment to it, uh, to the relationships that you built to focus on those last impressions, if you will. So uh, we talked about maintaining relationships. The other facet of the job search that you wanted to emphasize for folks that, that helped you along is doing your research in a way that is um, effective, but not creepy. Maybe there's a line there. Nikki, tell us more. Maybe I blur that line. Maybe I cross that line. No. Um, so, so yes, what happens is, especially if you're, you know, you're going to interview to be an AE and you decide that you're going to just find out all the stuff you can find out about product, the organization, as far as, you know, what their social channels are doing, what, what they're, how they're engaging with people and be able to, you know, articulate the value prop and, and be effective in, in the interview. But ultimately though, if I'm going to be put in front of a whole human and <laughs> have the opportunity to, to connect with them, even if I don't get the job, that's what I'm going to bank on first, especially in when what I'm interviewing for are, you know, sales jobs, right? Where it's part of the whole point of that is relationships and how well you connect with people. So it's a, another story that <laughs> involves a mentor of mine. Um, it was back when I was interviewing to work at Outbound Engine. And they had, after this big sort of cattle call info session, they had given us the advice to go and look at, you know, a few podcasts that, that he had done, the hiring manager, who, yes, again, happened to be Scott Lee's. Uh, <laughs> they, they told us to go sort of look at his LinkedIn and do all this stuff, right? So I did those things. And, and I was ready for a question or to speak knowledgeably and act like I, you know, knew something. But what I did that I think set me apart was I was like, I'm going to see what his Twitter is talking about. And so, so I go to his Twitter and I just go deep, deep, deep. And I find that he is a San Francisco Giants fan. Unfortunately, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I happen to be a, a Yankees fan. Um, so they're not exactly rivals, but it's like this thing of being a fan of a team because you're from that place. And then being a fan of a team that people think is bandwagon, but it's not really bandwagon. It's just that you like winners and they have a legacy of winning. Anyway, oh so- <laughs> we could digress. Keep going, Nikki, please. <laughs> so- so anyway, I get in this, in this meeting and people are like, be careful when you meet with him because he makes people cry and all this good stuff. And I'm supposed to be intimidated. Yeah. It's yeah. The whole other conversation. And I don't even remember exactly how the opportunity presented itself to drop this little nugget, but I just sort of said it. I was like, oh yeah, I noticed you were, you were a Giants fan. That's got to be tough these days, but I was able to do it authentically because I had really paid attention to what he had posted to that end. And it just opened up this whole other conversation. We start talking about ESPN 30 for 30 and everybody hates Christian Leitner and how we don't actually hate Christian Leitner, just Duke. Like it was like this whole thing. And that ended up being not only an opportunity for that position, but an opportunity, like I said, for this mentorship relationship moving forward. And so I just think that when you're out there in the job search, if you could just for a second set aside those standard pieces of research, um, and those, whatever we know, the actual goal that's at hand, right? That's a given. 
and have the goal, lead with the goal in mind of making a connection with an actual person, I've seen that, you know, pay off. And, and I think that that's, you know, sort of the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about maintaining your past relationships. So that's almost something you, you've got to be mindful of when you're not in job search mode, right? So that you can lean on those relationships when you're in job search mode as you're interviewing, you know, doing your research, going to the next level, but making it authentic. The next thing that I thought of these four simple ways to stand out in a job search that you mentioned to me, Nikki, is very practical and uh, a tactic that I think anybody can use. And that's using video and audio messaging on LinkedIn as part of your outreach, part of your job search. Tell us a little bit about how you've done that and, and what you've seen with it. Yeah, yeah. It's a fun story. It's, it's actually part, I think it's the reason why I'm here. So I straight up, so I was just up one night feverishly linked inning, which I tend to do. And like, it's like, it was, well, it wasn't that late at this point. At this point, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I get this, this message from James here at Sweetfish. It's like, Hey, friend of mine told me that you might think this job was cool. You should apply, you know, let me know if you want the link or whatever. Right. So I go and I click the link. And I was so excited about everything that I, I read about this, the really smart strategy for getting in front of uh, your ideal core prospects, this whole idea of it being about relationships as an entry point, which just like spoke to my experience at the time. And so for the next like two and a half hours, I consumed everything on Al Gore's internet about Sweetfish Media. And then without thinking about it, I go to James Carberry's uh, LinkedIn inbox and I use this little voice memo thing, which I had never used at, up to this point, but I was just that excited. And I'm like, James, like, just, just it, with the same vigor that I'm telling you right now, I was mm -hmm. like, James, yep. you guys are so cool. Like, yes, send me this link. And I was like, and I bet, you know, you guys don't have anybody like me that's hosting podcast. It was crazy. But anyway, so... <laughs> It wasn't that crazy. I heard the message. To your point, he heard it. It was impressive that you took the the time to do that, and uh, you were impressive because you you leveraged that medium right to right. to share yourself authentically as opposed to, oh James, I'm going to put in my application. I'm a super hard worker. I'm diligent, yeah, self starter. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you, you brought yourself across, right? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> awesome. I, I love that. So as we round out this conversation, Nikki, one of the things that you felt was really important in your most recent time uh, doing a job search was prioritizing self-care in the meantime. Tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe some of the, the pitfalls people can fall into, some sure. of the things that you did to avoid some of those during your most recent time, you know, in this job search. Yeah. So like Logan has told you guys, I'm a winner. No, um, I'm used to, I had this streak going before this last two months before I started at Sweetfish, I had this streak going where I had never uh, gotten invited for an in-person interview and not been offered the role. There had been maybe one time, right? And so I had sort of counted on that and sort of having my pick. But before this Sweetfish opportunity came up, I got told no five times in about as many weeks. And so my you know, confidence was, was going to suffer. And I was trying to figure out a way to, to just sort of claw myself back up to this level of confidence that's, you know, necessary um, in life and certainly in, in a sales role. And I noticed that I had stopped doing a lot of the things that make me feel confident. And, you know, while I was at my last two roles, I would regularly put out LinkedIn content, right? These fun little, little videos where I was like, singing a theme song on my way to work and, you know, inspiring people. But I, I was, I had so much, frankly, shame associated with you know, the no's that I got in a row. I stopped doing that. And so my way to get back into the self-care about it was to document that experience. So I made this really, you know, sort of transparent video about, you know, the fact that I had retreated for a little while and wanted to come back. And it was a, it was a thing that made me get out of bed every day. It was a thing that made me, you know, it, stay in this space among people who are doing what I wanted to do and still be visible and, and then also be human and keep that connection with the folks that follow along with, with my content. And just in, in a sort of, if you build it, they will come, you know, sort of, sort of thing. And, and part of the, well, again, the thing I was building was 
not only this connection, but my, my confidence and, you know, it is working. It's something I still stay on top of. I think that we're at a place right now where in most workplaces it is okay and, and even encouraged to talk about and pay attention to your, your self-care, your mental health and things like that. But for me, still sometimes as individual contributors, there is this, especially on the sales floor, there is this pressure to like, failure? No, I didn't fail. They didn't hurt my feelings. No, no, I, I don't feel things at all. Mm -hmm. um, so right. to document those, those experiences and to be as transparent and accessible as I can about those things was in, in this time when I was not being paid, <laughs> so when I did not have a job, was probably the number one reason why A, I was in the right place at the right time to hear about this opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And B, at, had maintained this level of confidence that was necessary to step into this role once, once yep. it within yep. itself. It's definitely twofold. I, I love the way that you round that out and, and unpack that there, Nikki. That's, that's phenomenal. I think, you know, we are very excited to, to have you as part of the team. As you can tell, guys, Nikki is going to be a fantastic host. She is full of energy. Yeah. She loves nerding out with our guests on <laughs> B2B sales and marketing strategies and tactics and tools and all of the, the things that you've come to expect from B2B growth episodes. So stay tuned. You will hear episodes from Nikki in the not too distant future. We are really excited to have her as part of the team. Nikki, thank you so much for kicking things off and taking a little time to prepare and share some of the things from your most recent season that I think are going to be valuable for listeners as well. Thanks so much, Logan. I'm pumped. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.